good afternoon or good morning or good night depending wherever in the world you are joining us from it's so lovely to have your company because you know what looking around the studio there's no one there i'm all on my own for this craft along but i am super super excited to have your guys company and just take you through this hour long craft along we've got a full hour just a little bit of a shorter show today and um, we're going to be focusing on education i know you guys have watched wake up call this morning super super quick and um, super fast deals so many deals um, that ben and sarah will bring you this morning they're going to be back again tonight for another black friday special it's going to be absolutely epic three hours so we're going to be a little bit more chill this afternoon we've got an hour focusing on education uh, with this craft along and i'm so pleased um, to be joining you this afternoon and be sharing this project with you because this is exactly what we're going to be creating using our gemini 3d panel embossing folders a really nice project in terms of showcasing how fabulous embossing folders actually are and all the different techniques that we can be doing with them think about using them with our inks perhaps what we traditionally think of uh, when we think of using embossing folders all gilding waxes are coming into play there as well but we're also going to actually be doing a little bit of alcohol pen coloring using our embossed images so really excited to be sharing all these techniques with you across this hour like i say Ben has, we say he's having a break, he's gone home for a nap. I didn't, I didn't tell you that, he'll need it. Believe you me, that three hour tonight is gonna be absolutely epic. Some of those deals are incredible and I must say, might sneak a few into this craft along as well. But what are you actually gonna to need to complete this particular project? we've got all the materials listed uh, that you will need to make this particular box uh, because it is a box that we're making this afternoon so from the 3d panel embossing folders we've got the beautiful blooms the classic damask decorative swirls timeless tiles and also vintage swirls from the fancy sentiment stamp and die collection we're using special friend then you're also going to need, and this is the little naughty one that I've snuck in, the Academy of Colour. And I'll be talking to you a little bit more about that later and why I was so desperate to use this in this particular project today. Also, from your Spectrum Noir Water Reactive Ink Pads, you'll need the Bordeaux and Chinese Red Colours, the Noir Black Waterproof Ink Pad, the Empire Gold Pebio Gilding Wax, A3 Card in Centura Pearl Snow White Hint of Gold, Nina Cardstock Multipurpose Cardstock, matte black cardstock you'll also need your additional items are your black enamel dots your collal all-purpose glue red liner tape in 12 millimeter width foam pads or foam tape depending on your preference your gemini die cutting machine your scoreboard or ultimate pro light we're going to be using today your guillotine your scissors and pokey tool that's everything you need to create this particular project before I start waffling too much, we're going to say a few hellos. Christine is joining us um, today. Lovely to have your company. Also, Susa is joining us. Are you crafting along? I'd love to see your mates afterwards if you do craft along with today's craft along. But before I start waffling too much, as I think we all know I have a tendency to do, especially about craft, I could waffle on about craft all day long, and I do pretty much. To anyone or anyone who'll listen or, quite frankly, to an, uh, an empty room like I am now, but hopefully you guys at home are joining me uh, as well. But like I say, without further ado, we've only got the hour and it does absolutely fly by, especially when you're crafting. Uh, so we're gonna crack on right away with the project. And we're starting with some of our Centura Pearl uh, in Snow White. This is our Snow White Hint of Gold. And just because we're choosing to use more warm tones in our project, we've got that lovely warm red. Using um, the gold rather than the silver works absolutely perfectly with those warm colour tones. And we've taken two sheets of the A3 cardstock and we've cut them down to exactly the same size and they're measuring 10 inches by 11 and a half inches. And don't worry, I know it's gonna be a little bit faster than we would usually be on a craft along, just with it being an hour. I will post all the measurements, all the supplies, all the key details on my Facebook page, which is Lily Fletcher, Crafter's Companion uh, this evening. When I get home, probably as I'm having my tea, uh, I'll get all those posted for you so you've got those so you can refer back to them. We're using our Ultimate Pro, like I say, but I have to say I quite like using my scoring tool that comes with your guillotine. But talking of guillotines, <sighs> If you need to get yourself guillotine, get yourself on the website, 30% off. <sighs> Lots of amazing Black Friday deals on the website. But like I say, we've cut both of them to the same size, which is 11 and a half by 10 inches. One of them, and this is probably the most important part of the craft along. I know it is for me for the amount of boxes I've got wrong. So I've forgot which one is the lid and which one is the base. We're marking one with an L. That's gonna be our lid. We're not worried about having to rub that out or anything like that. When we decorate our box, we will be covering up that L, but 
honestly believe you me it might seem daft you might think oh i'll remember every time i've done that i've like, had a little bit of a crafty boo boo so definitely do mark your lid and you'll know you don't need to mark the other one if it's not got an l on it's the base because it's not the lid so nice and simple so in your ultimate pro you've got your box lid your other side is your box base let's start off with the box lid our piece with the l in we're going to score at two inch depth so each line on here is half an inch so that's one inch that's two inch so we're going to score along that score line and i always say uh, when you're scoring it doesn't matter whether you're using your proper uh, scoring tool that comes with your ultimate pro or if you like me and prefer to use your little scoring tool that comes with your guillotine I always say don't go in like a bull in a china shop trying to score really heavily uh, first time round. Score once over that area and then keep on repeating until you've built up um, a score line onto your piece. That way you're less likely to tear the car stop and you're um, more likely to get that lovely crisp um, score line every single time. Now just because of the size of our piece um, of car stop we don't need to be limited um, by the size of our scoreboard. Like I say we are using our A3 card but we can just move our car stock and do that score line a couple of times um, so that we've got the right length onto our box with it being a larger larger box so I thought we'd go with a slightly larger format so using our A3 card and you will find all of our Sanchero Pearl in both your A4 and your A3 sizes on our website um, so definitely do check that out especially if you're treating yourself to some Black Friday goodies so don't forget we do have that fabulous um, spending save offer as well I have to say it's wonderful is that offer if you're spending £50 you're going to get 5% off it's 10% off on a £100 spend it's 15% off £150 or dollar for that matter spend uh, and it's 20% off a £200 spend so if you are um, looking to boost that basket spend um, something like your car stock that you know are core items you're going to use them time and time again uh, you need to stock up then now is the perfect time um, to be doing that so now we've moved on to our second piece and we're doing exactly the same. The only difference is, is that we're now on the box base um, side of our Ultimate Pro instead of our box lid side. And we're just scoring again at two inches. So scoring on that longer side, we'll score about halfway just over and then we'll move our cardstock so then we can complete that score line like so. Then we're going to move our Ultimate Pro out of the way. You could of course be using any of our other scoreboards uh, with the built-in box making technology. So something like your boxer board would be perfect um, for use um, for that sort of um, box making technique as well. But it's so easy when you're using your Ultimate Pro to create your boxes with your lid in your base uh, which are um, different sizes so that they fit together and um, because we've got that built-in box making technology it means that your lid is about an eighth of an inch bigger um, than your base but you've not had to calculate that you've not had to cut your um, lid and your base pieces to different sizes starting with the same size piece of cardstock different side of the scoreboard will give you that perfect result every single time as long as you remember to mark which one's the lid and the base. I think it was probably the first time I actually ever created uh, a box on Crafters TV. I obviously didn't put my little marking on there. I thought, oh, it's, it's okay, I'll remember, it'll be okay. Um, and unfortunately, we had two lids that didn't quite fit together, uh, which was not ideal. I mean, you can always just create another base of a different measurement, but it's not what we want. Um, so just by marking which one's the lid, uh, you'll get that perfect fit. And all we're doing is we're going around and we're just reinforcing every single score line that we've put in. So using our bone folder to reinforce those score lines, you can see how beautifully our Centura Pearl actually scores and folds. We've got no cracking, um, no sort of puckering or ripping or tearing in those score lines at all. And that's the beauty of Centura Pearl. It scores absolutely perfectly every single time. So ideal for your car bases and your box bases like what we're doing here. Now, in order to make our box fold together more neatly, when we come to actually construct it, we need to just remove a little bit of bulk from the corners. So all we do is we trim up the score line to where those score lines cross in that sort of cross section. And then we just remove a right angle triangle. So just another cut line up to there and we end up removing a triangle like that very, very easily. And what it means is if we do sort of the same here, so if we cut up 
to that section, but we don't remove the triangle. When we fold it together, we've got that piece of cardstock there, which could potentially catch and snag on that box base there. But by actually doing that second cut line, so cutting up on that diagonal to where those score lines cross, we remove that little bit of excess cardstock, which means when we come to fold it together, there's no snagging, there's no catching uh, of that tab on that base there. So we're gonna get that perfect fold, that neat finish, and that's that's what it's all about, really. It's these little, uh, little tips and tricks that you pick up, and I'll be honest, I learned this um, many, many moons ago when I first bought my Ultimate Pro, which is actually probably one of the first Crafters Companion goodies I actually ever bought. And um, that was something that I read in the instruction booklet. And don't forget, your Ultimate Pro does come with full colour instructions as well. Um, and I just thought it was such a good idea, such a simple thing to do. Uh, but it does just mean your boxes look that little bit more professional. But I'm hearing, hearing uh, on the grapevine or through my ear uh, that we've got a question. And I must say, guys, please do get in your questions. I might be all on my own, so I'd love to hear, love to hear from you. And if you do have any questions, please do get them in. So take it away so we've got a question from Rhonda and she would like to know the size of the actual box in the end oh so we will be covering that in just a moment but if we have a little look it will be if I look at my measurements it will be at seven and a half so this is the box lid will be seven and a half inches by six inches um, and we'll be able to look at that in a little bit more detail when we um, actually come to do our mats and layers for the box lid. A few more hellos coming uh, through. It's so nice to have your guys' company. It's nice to know that I'm not quite alone. I might be talking to an empty room, but let's be honest, that's me most evenings in my craft room anyway. So, you know, does everyone else at home do that? Do they sit crafting on their own, talking to themselves? Because I do. Anyway, otherwise, how would I know what I'm doing? I've got to, t I've got to talk to myself. <laughs> anyway, what we've done is we've removed those triangles from both the box lid and the box base. We're setting the base aside for now. We're gonna focus on the lid. We just had that question from our Rhonda come in about the measurements of our box lid. And what we've done is we've taken a piece of black cardstock, and I tend to work in quarter of an inch increments. So if our box lid is measuring seven and a half by six inches, I sound like I'm about to do a bit of math now. I hope I'm not overcomplicating it because it is really nice and simple. All we're going to do for our first mat and layer is we're just going to make it a quarter of an inch smaller. So taking some of our matte black cardstock, which of course you will find on the website, absolute core cardstock that we use day in, day out, we've cut that down to seven and a quarter by five and three quarter. Now we've got another question coming through, so I'm braced, I'm ready. It's another question from Rhonda. Yes, so are the sides two inches we are being asked? Yes, Rhonda, the sides are two inches. So we scored at a two inch depth, which means that our, um, sort of the width, the size of your, um, lost the word, the size, the size of your size <laughs> is two inches. By scoring at two inches, you will get that two inch depth. So that is half. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of our ink pads. So I'm using our Harmony Water Reactive. Uh, I'm going for Bordeaux. I'm gonna sort of mix um, Bordeaux and Chinese red, and we're just gonna ink around the edges just to frame this and um, stop it from being quite so stark white and just give it that red, ed red edge. I'm really trying to trip over my words, aren't I? It doesn't take a lot, uh, but I must get my teeth in. I can't say it's early either, but... Um, so just going around the edges with our inks and don't worry guys i know we're having a few questions about the uh, measurements because i am going a little bit quicker than perhaps we would normally uh, on a craft along just with it being an hour but don't worry i will post all the measurements and um all the um so the directions and everything that i use in this craft along on my facebook page which is lily fletcher's crafters companion uh, later today i'll make sure that, that we've got a fish finished um, project picture and all your measurements posted on there for you um, so if you do want to recreate this at a later date first of all send photos but secondly you will have all those measurements on there making it nice and easy to refer back to so all we've done is we've just um, inked the edges um, of that piece of centura pearl it does just make such a difference completely transforms that takes it from being quite I don't want to say boring because there's nothing boring about Centura Pearl. Um, it's a beautiful cardstock, but it stops it from being um, tone on tone and quite plain and perhaps a little bit stark. It's having that little pop of colour that will work beautifully when we come to actually um, 
I was going to say pop our poppy. And I'm going to uh, pop our poppies onto our box lid. So we're going to mat and layer our piece that we've just inked onto that black border. Nice quarter of an inch increment there gives us that lovely thin mat and layer. Gives your box that sort of elegant finish. And um, when you've got your small mats and layers, it does really give give your projects that little bit of finesse. Makes them look quite elegant as opposed to having your uh, wide mats and layers. And we're just going to pop our, um, our mat and layer piece onto our lid. And I'm having some great feedback coming through my ear uh, about the talking to yourself. And it's making me feel a lot better. A lot of you guys at home are saying you talk to yourself, which I'm very, very reassured here. And apparently one of you guys at home is saying it's like having a, a staff meeting, a personal staff meeting. I have them on the daily. <laughs> I have them on the hourly minutely all the time lots of advice uh, going on that i'm giving myself uh, but that's what we need so some of you guys are saying that you're not using ultimate pro enough look how easy it is to create a box make sure you are using it if you've not got it check out the website but we're going to place our box lid to one side for just a moment we've got our mat and layer onto there but we're going to move on to what's perhaps one of the most exciting bits of our craft along and that's going to be actually bringing out these fabulous 3D embossing folders. So I don't know if I've actually mentioned yet that these are 3D. They're not just any old embossing folder. Oh no, they are 3D embossing folders. And I know you, some of you guys are getting these um, orders coming through as of late. So if you do um, get these home, make sure you're saving this craft along and you can craft along with me at a later date. And like I say, do share your makes. What I love about these is they're a little bit different in terms of their format. So within each set, and you are getting plenty um, to play with within the, um, the collection, which you will find on the website. You get two folders within each set, and they are sized by seven inches by two inches. Really nice size, and I must say, when I first looked at these, I sort of thought, hmm, smaller format. I don't have many embossing folders like that. Will I use them? Will I use them a lot? My goodness me, I answer that question within about the first two days of getting them. They are so, so versatile can use them for lots and lots of different projects. Don't think because perhaps they're a little bit smaller than some of your other embossing folders that they're not as versatile. Absolutely not. These are wonderful to work with. And we're taking for this particular one, the decorative swirls. And like I, you would have seen earlier when we actually went through the shopping list, I've used pretty much all of them. It's one of those you think, mm, I get two, two embossing folders within a set. Maybe I can just get a couple of packs and we do it on a multi-buy on the website if you are just wanting to get a few but I have to say they all mix and match together throughout the range so if you can stretch to the main collection I would definitely do that because um, you will get so much usage out of these fabulous little embossing folders. Now like I say they are 3D so in our Gemini machine and I'm using our Gemini Junior plates um, for this particular little bit of embossing we have our clear cutting plate then our cardstock and we're embossing multi-purpose cardstock that's inside our folder and then your magnetic shim and your clear um, plastic shim is going to go on the top. I'm going to run that through our die cutting machine and with them being that two inches by seven inches in size they are perfect to work with your Gemini Junior or perhaps you're using your larger Gemini with your Gemini Junior plates. Look how easy and quick that was just to run through the die cutting machine. Like I say multi-purpose cardstock, 300 GSM cardstock absolutely beautiful emboss look how perfect one pass through that die cutting machine we've got that beautiful deep 3d emboss design not just any old embossing oh no 3d embossing and it does look absolutely incredible but we want to make a little bit more of that fabulous emboss design and that's where we're going to bring in some of our ink pads and what i really wanted to share with you during this craft along is lots of different techniques that we can use for our embossing folders i think i have to admit i neglect embossing folders and it's bad i don't well don't worry guys i have plenty of them it's not the pro it's not an issue that um I don't buy enough because I do buy plenty and I do have the collection to prove it. But I sometimes, I don't know if I kind of forget about them or I kind of think, mm, shall I use them, shall I not? But when you start using your embossing folders, gets, it's for me, it's one of those, it's like almost like a light bulb moment. It's like, why don't I use these enough? Because there are so many different techniques you can do with your embossing folders. They can be a focal point of your project or they can be just that little extra bit of texture uh, in the background 
to add that extra little bit of detail that your uh, projects are missing. And Nicola has actually, in my ears, given a great suggestion. Wouldn't these make amazing bookmarks? What a fabulous Christmas gift that would be, perhaps for if you've got grandkids and they've maybe just started to learn to read and you want to give them a little gift, perhaps you're going to make a little gift box um, to pop it in and then you're going to actually create a bookmark using these. The format, that two by seven inch format, would be absolutely perfect for that. So inking, we started off with our Chinese red. Now we're going to go in with our Bordeaux, which is a little bit darker uh, in colour tone, but still the same colour family. Using our round blending tool, if you are going for that collection that we've got on the website, you do get the round blending tool uh, and three ink pads included, as well as all those embossing folders. So a great starter bundle if you're new to your embossing folders, new to inking, um, you've got everything in there that you need to get you started working in circular motions, so picking up some of that ink from our ink pad, we're using our water reactive ink pads because they give you that gorgeous, um, sort of easy to blend, easy to uh, lay down, we've got long open time with these, so they're not really, really slow drying as in a pigment ink pad, but you've got enough time uh, that you can go in and rework that colour and really blend those colours together. So you can see how that now pops really nicely. Um, from that design, we can see that lovely embossed detail even better just by adding that quick bit of inking. And I think when we think of embossing folders, that's perhaps what we first think of. We think of adding ink to our designs. But what I really want to show you is that we can do so much more. And we can actually mix our mediums as well. And I must say, I'd probably not think of myself as a mixed media crafter, but this is absolutely what we're doing. We're mixing our mediums. So we are doing a little bit of mixed media crafting, which is so much fun. And it doesn't have to be super messy. After all, I've got my wipes at the ready, so we'll be fine. <laughs> so we're going to use some of our gilding wax, and this is our Empire Gold. Oh, I just love gilding wax. Oh, we're zooming in. Look how gorgeous that is. Absolutely stunning. You will find a bundle, um, a set of all five colours that we do. So you get four of the different golds, and you get the silver as well uh, within that set, saving over 25%. So a great uh, little start collection, I have to say, when I first but gilding waxes, of course, I had to have every colour, <laughs> so I did go for that bundle, um, but a great one, so you've got all bases covered, and all we're going to do, I find it easier to work with my finger with gilding waxes, you can use your blending tools if you keep a separate one for your gilding waxes and your inks, but I must say I find I get more control um, by actually using that gilding wax on my finger just like so. So I'm going to pop, take a little bit out of the pot, then I dab it out onto my craft mat. You want to have only the tiniest bit on your finger. So using your glass mat is perfect to actually remove that excess. And then you can just go back in and pick it up from your glass mat. You can do the same in your lid. Sometimes I'll sort of um, dab the excess onto the lid, the inside of the lid of your pot, and that works um, perfectly as well. But just going around in circular motions, so it's that same technique as we did with the ink, really. It's using that circular motion is going to give you that smoothest lay down of colour. And it just brings that design out even more. Gives it almost a little bit of a vintage effect. Gives it that little um, sort of opulent metallic touch. Makes it look that little bit more special. Makes it look expensive, let's be honest. And if you are selling your makes and you add a little bit of gilding wax, doesn't it just look absolutely fabulous? Teresa saying that this Empire Gold is a favourite of the gilding waxes. Please nobody make me choose because I'll be honest with you, the last one that I've used is my favourite. So at this current um, moment in time, my favourite is Empire Gold. If uh, then I go and do a project with Renaissance Gold, that will be my favourite. <laughs> I'm terrible for choosing things like that. I am absolutely terrible. Don't ask me my favourite of anything craft related. You won't be getting a, a straight answer. <laughs> so we've added our gilding wax onto there like so. And how fabulous does it look to add the two different mediums? So starting off with our ink and then going over the top with our gilding wax gives you a really nice effect for any of your embossed designs. It's going to be really good. I'm actually going to wipe the mat now because otherwise there'll be gilding wax everywhere. Um, as was the case, I was in my, in my uh, craft room over the weekend. I was playing with lots of gilding wax. Uh, and yeah, there was gilding wax everywhere. So there was um, quite a thorough clean down session at the end, but it was great fun. And I do absolutely love working with my gilding wax. So that particular panel was cut to, um, we're cutting to, do, 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 um, two of these, uh, six and three quarters by one and a half. And then we're gonna do two of these because when we've got our box, we've got two of the longer sides and then we've got two of sort of the shorter size. So we need two 
of the same size and two of the other side. So all I've done is I've gone ahead and used some of the other embossing folders within the collection. And what I really wanted to show you how easy it is to actually um, use the different embossing folders together. And I've realized I've actually embossed the wrong piece. Oh no, I've embossed the one that I should have done um, that was on Nina cardstock. So all we're gonna do is gonna quickly do it again, but we're gonna do a little bit of speed crafting to show when you, um, when you're a little bit more experienced with your embossing and your inking, you can go a little bit quicker. So this is a great opportunity to recap if you've just joined us exactly what we did. So we've got a piece of our multi-purpose cardstock. It is actually the multi-purpose card this time. I've not used the wrong one, but not to worry. We'll just cut another piece of our Nina for the next stage. We're running that through our embossing folder and um, with our embossing folder through our die cutting machine take it out of the folder and you can see we've got that gorgeous embossed design then we're going to go ahead for a nice little recap so if you have just joined us this is exactly what we're doing so we're taking some of our water reactive inks using bordeaux and uh, chinese red for this lovely um lovely ready tone which is going to match with our poppies when we um pop pop our <laughs> I keep doing that pop our poppies onto our gift box a little bit later. So our ink is going to add the colour onto there and it's going to start to make that design pop um, from the background. And then to finish it off, all we did is we take some of our gilding wax using Empire Gold for this, dabbing it out onto our craft mat to remove that excess. And then we're just going to go around again in circular motions to add that gilding wax onto there to bring out that detail even more. We've laid the colour down, but we want to pick out those details, add a little bit of opulence, so we're adding our, um, our gilding wax onto there. And you could be using any of the colours of gilding wax. Probably would steer away from silver just because we've used um, some of our Centura Pearl Hint of Gold. Uh, so just keep in with that gold theme, make everything match really nicely. Um, any of the four golds would work perfectly. So we're back up to speed. So what we've got is we've got um, two of this larger size. So these are measuring seven inches by one and three quarters. So two of those, and then we've got two of our shorter ones. So we've got two by six and three quarters by one and a half and two of five and a half by one and a half. Don't worry, I will be posting all the measurements on my Facebook page later today. And then we've got our black mats, which are a quarter of an inch larger. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna take one of our tape pens. Ooh, if you guys are needing to stock up on your tape pens, got some fabulous bundles coming up on tonight's show of both the straight and the dotty. Uh, amazing savings on those, so it's definitely the time to stock up. Uh, great for matting and layering your tape pens. We're using the straight uh, for this particular little bit of matting and layering, but if you are adhering any of your delicate or intricate die cuts, your um, dotty ones are absolutely perfect for that. But for matting and layering, your um, straight ones are the ones to go for, for a real quick, uh, quick stick. I must say, when I created my project at home, I actually used um, some all-purpose glue, which is great for your matting and layering as well. It does give you that little bit of wiggle room. So if you're not so confident, perhaps you're new to crafting and you're not 100% confident uh, on actually um, lining things up first time, then your all-purpose glue gives you that little bit of wiggle room, that little bit of time to actually maneuver um, your mat and layer into position to give you that nice even mat and layer um, so it does just make that a little bit easier so it is options with adhesives it definitely is personal preference but matting and layering each of those onto the black cardstock like so and these are going to be the mats for our box lid side so if we bring in um, our box lid that we popped our mats and layers onto earlier and all we're going to do is we're going to take these four side panels and we're going to add these onto the sides of our um, box so we've got two of the longer ones and then we've got two of the shorter we're just going to centralize that so it's nice and even and then we're going to stick those down again we're sticking them flat so using our tape runner is going to give us that nice um, firm firm bond onto there. We're not going to have to worry about anything uh, coming unstuck, which is definitely not what you want with your boxes. But I'm hearing we've got another question coming through. So, oh, 
So we're um, wondering where I'm going to post the measurements. So they will be going on my Lily Fletcher Crafters Companion Facebook page, and I'll make sure uh, I also share um, those measurements uh, on the Club Inspire and the Armour Crafters Companion Facebook group. But uh, my page should be linked in the comments. So if you don't follow that already, do just check that out, and I'll make sure I get those posted uh, by the end of the day for you guys. So you've got all the measurements so you can craft along at home. Um, just with a little bit more time, I know we are, we are, um, we've not got as much time for this particular craft along. We're about halfway through, gosh it does fly, uh, but I will make sure that all those measurements are posted. So now we've started, it's really starting to take shape. We've got our four um, side panels all onto there, using our ink and gilding wax technique, repeating that same technique for all four panels, just with different embossing folders. Now this is where I'm gonna have to go back and actually trim another panel down to size, because if you remember, I had all my Nina cardstock cut down to size, but I did use the wrong piece um, to emboss. So all we're gonna do is gonna take our guillotine, uh, and don't forget, large guillotine, 30% off. <coughs> I didn't tell you that. <laughs> I mean, I know that the guys are gonna have all the fun tonight on um, on the Black Friday special, but you know, I wanted a little bit, a little bit of the fun as well. So I've, I've snapped up some of the deals and I'm sharing them with you guys. I know they've already given you a sneak peek on this morning's wake up call anyway. So I thought, you know what? You've seen some of the deals already. I'm gonna, gonna sneak a few into our craft along. It would have been rude not to. So all we're doing now is we're taking a piece of Nina cardstock and it's one and three quarter inches by six and a half. And we're using Nina cardstock for this particular panel because we're actually gonna be coloring using some of our um, alcohol pens. And the best cardstock for use with your alcohol pens is always your Nina cardstock. It's gonna give you that best blend. It's gonna make it really easy to mix those colors together to get that lovely realistic shaded effect. And all we're doing now is we're taking another of the embossing folders. This is from Beautiful Blooms. This gorgeous poppy design would have been perfect if you were creating anything for Remembrance Day. It would be um, absolutely ideal for Remembrance Day cards or decor. But it's exactly the same um, sandwich combination going through our Gemini Junior machine. The only difference is first time round we embossed using our multi-purpose card. Now we're embossing using our Nina cardstock. So we're running that through. And I remove this from our folder. And you can see how absolutely gorgeously that embosses, such a deep emboss into there. And with it being a 3D embossing folder, I always think it looks almost like marble that's being carved. It looks very much sculpted, uh, rather than just a, I was gonna say flat emboss, which is absolutely ridiculous because it doesn't make any sense because the whole point of it being embossed is that it's raised. But it is just, it's got that flow to that design. It looks absolutely beautiful. But we wanna add some color to that to make it pop even more. Let's make those poppies pop, so to speak. Whew, tongue twister in there. And I did say earlier, I was sneaking in the Academy of Color. We've got actually got this on a Black Friday deal. You will be seeing that tonight uh, on the Black Friday special amazing price saving over 40 percent on that which is absolutely incredible so i thought you know what i've got to got to have a little piece of that action i've got to bring in some of those pens uh, from the academy of color because i want to show you as well th these pens are obviously fabulous and um, for use alongside the stamps that you get in the box and that education program that leanne brings you absolutely invaluable to learn all your techniques but of course you can be using your pens for just your day-to-day -day coloring and we do have the same um, numbering and lettering system on these pens uh, as we do with our classics and illustrators um, so if you don't have the academy of color first of all make sure you treat yourself to it but while you are waiting for that order to arrive perhaps you want to get started on the craft along straight away you can be using your classics or illustrators in those same pen colors and don't worry i will be posting all of the pen colors as well on my facebook page uh, later today i'm going to start off with one of my techniques that i absolutely love and this is something that i learned um, actually from watching leanne doing the academy of color adding gray as a base coat so we're going to take iga i'm going to start off I do like doing this. I like starting off with techniques and they look awful to start with. And you just look at it and think, my goodness, what is, she, what is she doing? But they all come good in the end, let me promise you. So this is one of these where it starts off looking like mm, a bit of a dog's dinner, let's be honest. But in the end, it looks, hopefully, fingers crossed, don't want to sort of big myself up um, for a photo here, but it does look quite fabulous at the end. And I always find it's really easy to actually colour your embossed designs same technique as when we'd colour our stamps. The only difference is, obviously, we've not got that outline, 
we've got that embossed line instead and it does actually make it I think almost easier to colour in because I always liken it to um, the, the bowling analogy and I'm not, not very good at bowling. Yes, I am one of those that has to have the uh, ramps up either side and still can't get the bowling ball down the alley. However, <laughs> bowling analogy. You know how you've got the um, sort of bumpers either side? I liken that to when you've got your embossed designs rather than your stamp designs. It almost keeps you within the lines. If you try and go outside the lines, it's almost like it's pushing you back because you've got that raised detail. So it is great if you are new to your colouring. Colouring embossing folders might even perhaps be easier than stamps. And I don't want to say that because I don't want to do a disservice to stamps because I'm sure you guys at home know I absolutely love um, my stamping and colouring all my stamped images. But it is easy to colour it in, in your embossed designs too. So all we've gone around, it doesn't that look awful? You're thinking, blimey, this is not going to turn out to be much. Um, but we're adding in, where there be the darker areas, where there be the shadow, we're adding in some grey pen, that IGA, as our undercoat. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, dark red pen. So we've got DR2, which is the lightest of the two pen colours uh, on this particular pen. And don't forget, if you've not seen the Academy of Colour before, we have these duo colour alcohol pens included. So a little bit like our tri-blends uh, in that they have three different pens of the same colour family but different shades within the one barrel. With these we've got two different shades of that same colour family within the one barrel. So you know that those two colours that we've got within that one pen are going to mix, mix together and blend together perfectly to give you those shaded results um, really nice and easily without having to worry about matching um, particular pen colours or having to have lots and lots of different pens, you've got the two tones within that one barrel, making it nice and easy uh, when you come to choose your colours. So we're going over the design with DR2, which is the palest um, of the two red colours that we're going to use, just going over this particular poppy, and I know we've got three poppies on the design, but I always say focus on one area of the design, one area, of whether it be a stamped image, an embossed image like we've got here, focus on that one section. Once you've mastered that, then move on to the next section. So it's still looking a little bit ropey, let's be honest, but we've filled in with our red, and then we're gonna go to our darker of the two reds, the DR4. This is where we're gonna really go over that gray that we've already added down. So we're going over all of that gray pen, and then flicking upwards, we've got the beautiful brush nib on these duo um, color alcohol pens. So we're just letting that nib do the work going over that grey and flicking upwards, making sure we don't go over all of the area that we've added the lighter um, red to, just leaving some of that visible at the edges, but going over um, all of that grey. And by adding that grey as a base layer, although we're only using two um, different shades of the red, and traditionally a lot of people would say you need sort of a three pen blend, we're sort of blowing that out of the water, showing that you don't need those three different pens from the same colour family. By using that grey underneath, it's going to give you that depth, it's going to give you that dimension, but just using the two um, red pens over the top gives it that real, real pop, that real realistic look, which um, really does transform your colouring. But easy, and as well, if you've not got a lot of pens, it does just sort of give you even more options, even more versatility um, by having that grey undercoat. It allows you to add that dimension without having perhaps four or five um, different shades from the same colour family so it's perfect if you are new to your colouring. So all we've done is we've just flicked out that colour, it gives us that amazing depth onto there nice and easy. Now for the centre we're going to take our paler grey so we're going to start off with IG2 and all the pens I'm using are from that original Academy of Colour box, I'm not using any of the additional boxes all from that original box that you will find uh, on tonight's show and that incredible saving, taking it to under £80, which quite frankly, given the amount of education, it's not just about the product, it's very much about the education as well, which in my, um, in my eyes is definitely invaluable to get um, Leanne's education when it comes to colouring. I mean, quite frankly, what she doesn't know about colouring, I'm not sure it's worth knowing. She is really the absolute oracle when it comes to spe all things Spectrum Noir. Um, so to be able to get those educational videos alongside all of the pens that you're getting, all of the stamps, so you're getting alcohol pens and you've also got all your aqua pens as well. I could wax lyrical about the um, particular uh, Academy of Colour, it's absolutely amazing. So we're going in with our IGA which is our darkest grey and we're just doing 
in painting we'd call this stippling so you sort of it's almost like pointillism or stippling uh, if you're painting and just dotting outwards to give that little bit of texture and um, that effect of that center of the poppy and then we're going back in with our ig5 that mid-tone and we're just going to dot again just to blend that out to give a little bit more of a blended subtle effect and then if we want to go back in with the darker that ig8 and just intensify around the edges a little bit more we can absolutely do with that we can always add a little bit more into that light so hasn't it transformed it looks totally different from how ropey let's be honest it did look very ropey at the start it looked how fabulous that looks just by using your gray as an under as an undercoat of course we'd be using um, doing exactly the same technique on the other two poppy heads but we're going to move on to the leaves now so with the same technique for all of the leaves i'm just going to focus on this one here um, to start with so all we're going to do is we're going to start with our cg1 again using pens from our original academy of colored box we're having some lovely um, comments from you guys at home so i'm so pleased you're enjoying the craft along you're saying you're looking forward to recreating this at home i'd love to see what you make i'd love to see you guys's take on the project so when you take the projects and make it your own i think for me that's something i absolutely love to see and just putting your twist on it is absolutely fabulous, I always think. As long as we can inspire you to get creative, give you that sort of starting point, and um, that's definitely what it's all about. So mixing up the colours, perhaps, um, to your own personal taste. I know we get lots and lots of different colours of poppies, um, so perhaps personalising that to the recipient's favourite colour, or using one of the other embossing folders, the other floral embossing folders in the set, uh, and personalising it maybe to their favourite flower. But how easy was it to colour in that leaf? Just a little bit of CG3 flicked into the centre makes it really nice and easy to colour. I'll show you with one of the stems as well how quick and simple we can add some colour onto those. So again starting off with our lightest of the two colours which is our CG1 and I have to say I absolutely love the fact that we've got those two colour tones within the one pen. It makes it so much easier, so much more convenient isn't it to have those two colour tones on the same pen rather than having to have two separate pens great if you are crafting on the move uh, and you don't want to have too many pens to carry with you but you want to get a little bit of colouring done then it's great to have those two colour tones on that same barrel it really does save your storage so we've started to colour in that image but if we fast forward a little bit this craft along i really want to just take you through the techniques give you those starting points that you guys can sort of progress and make your own when you come to do your own craft along but teaching you all the techniques so you've got those in your crafty arsenal so we're going to leave that to one side and we're going to bring in one that i've done earlier and you can see it looks exactly the same it's exactly the same technique just repeated several times over so same technique for all three poppies same technique on all the leaves so once you've mastered it for one area you can absolutely go and do it for the rest of that um, i'm just going to say stamped image of course it's not a stamped image it is an embossed image we're using it how we would use our stamps so all we're going to do now to keep that continuity to keep that flow and i'm always wittering on about this i'm always wittering on about something but i'm always going on about the flow of your designs and getting things coordinating and matching so everything harmonizes and works together beautifully so with our um, embossed panels that we inked and gilded a little bit earlier we um, matte and layer those onto some um, black cardstock so we're doing exactly the same for this particular panel just like so so again our tape runner and then we're matting and laying that onto our black and then all we're going to do and doesn't that just make it absolutely pop so that really does draw the eye into the center of those poppies by having that black body it really does make a difference and i think sometimes we do sort of shy away from our uh, our black cardstock sometimes we think it might look a little bit harsh but really it just make the, makes those colors sing and pop even more so what we're going to do is going to take some of our now i have to say when i was sat in the office earlier when uh, ben and sarah was on I could hear i just thought i'm sure i can hear people singing who's singing what are they singing and i thought mm, i think i know what they're singing about so i'm going to call this a uh, a 3d adhesive um, it's circular it comes on almost like a wheel you could call it but of course it's completely up to you what adhesive <laughs> what adhesive you use i think you guys are probably um probably tired out from all the singing this morning so no singing and i could hear it earlier so we're just going to be going to be very dignified for this craft along you know nice and chill nice nice easy hour nice bit of crafting then they can come back this evening and can do all the songs they like for three hours but 
We're just going to chill out for the middle of the day. So any 3D adhesive you like, you could of course use your um, Colal 3D glue gel. I have to say I am a foam tape uh, sort of girl, but again, always p personal preference. So tips for taking the backing off. A lot of people actually use their tweezers. Ooh, and talking of tweezers, might be, uh, might be on an offer on the website. So tweezers are a good one. Some guys use their pokey tool as well. I, I have to say I've got quite good nails. <laughs> so my nails are my tools and I should never recommend that, but I do. But pokey tool tweezers are all absolutely perfect for getting that backing off. So I've added that onto there, but of course, looks, oh no, I hear the scene in the comments. Well, I'm not singing it, but you can sing it all you like. No nonsense today, we're not having any nonsense. None of this singing, because <laughs> otherwise it just gets stuck in my head and I can't get it out for days. So that's why we're not singing. But we've got this area on our uh, box. It looks a little bit plain. So we're going to bring in a sentiment. Of course, you can be using any sentiment you like, but I saw we had an absolutely fabulous deal on some of our uh, fancy sentiment stamp and dies. And I have to say, these have become for me a little bit of a go-to in my crafty stash. I'm using these time and time again. I love the fact that you get the stamps, get two separate stamps that you can use together or separately. And you're getting what looks like, let's be honest, it looks like a bit of a funny die. When you first see these, you sort of think, hmm, what's that do? But these are super, super useful to actually cut out our stamp design. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our die, a piece of white multi-purpose cardstock. This might also be uh, on and off on the website, your low tack tape, absolutely essential for taping your dies into position when you run them through your die cutter machine. And we're just gonna cut that particular um, shape out. I find it's easier with these to actually die cut first and then stamp. I'll show you how easy it is to do that in just a moment. But run that through our die cutter machine. Of course, can be any car start you like. Uh, these look fabulous, actually heat embossed. So maybe uh, die cut from black cardstock and then actually um, heat emboss. Or some of you guys are reassuring um, me that, don't worry, they sung uh, that particular song for me. <laughs> Very grateful to you guys at home, I'm sure you did. Uh, I'm sure some of you are probably sat in your craft rooms at home now actually singing it to yourself, which is the sort of thing I usually do, but not today. <laughs> so I don't want to get it stuck in my head. So we've got our die cut here and we're bringing in our stamp. This is the friend. We're using the special friend, but you do get, um, four different designs within that bundle that you will find on the website. Uh, fab little price point on those, under £20. So great if you are looking to build your stash, you are looking to get a few more sentiment stamps in. That's a great little one to go for. So these might, this, this little beauty, our four by four inch stamping platform, you might also find that on a cracking deal on the website. I'm teasing you guys, do you know what? I'm teasing myself as well. I'm thinking, how many stamping platforms does a girl need? Another one, wouldn't hurt, would it? At the end of the day, I'll, I probably will be on that website getting my order in. Oh, I'm terrible, but I do love my craft. It does all get used. So I'm using my um, waterproof ink pad in noir black. You could use your quick dry. I just find I get a really nice, uh, crisp, deep black stamped impression uh, with my waterproof. All I'm doing is I'm positioning that over the top, of course, with um, my stamping mat underneath. Um, just gives you that perfect sort of density. Um, to actually stamp onto. It's gonna give you that best stamped impression. And all we're doing, we've lined that up and we call this sort of like fingertip dancing. So I'm not gonna to have to go down with the heel of my um, um, heel of my hand. I'm not having to give it CPR or anything like that. Just using your fingertips to go all over that stamp, that stamp design. And you will find the quality of these stamps, when you get a really nice quality stamp uh, that's clear, it can almost be, I don't wanna stay sticky, but almost Got you guys at home will probably know what, I've, what I'm talking about. It's not tacky, it's almost, almost got a little bit of cling to it. And what you'll find is quite often it'll just pick up your cardstock onto your stamp. No worries at all. Perfect use for your tweezers actually to pull that stamped uh, image off of there. But you can see first time, crisp stamped impression. And look how perfectly uh, that is die cut. So die cutting first and then stamping onto that die cut image gives you that perfect lined up design really easy to do. I always say don't be worried about mashing up stamps and dies. Really easy to actually coordinate your stamps and dies. As long as you're using your uh, low tack tape when you're taping your die down, uh, just taking a minute to position that stamp, you'll get that perfect design. Not hard at all. So all we've done is we've actually die cut um, 
another of these. So we cut exactly the same die that we just ran through our die cutting machine with the white cardstock. We've just die cut that from some of our black cardstock because if we were to bring in um, our box base, if we were to add that onto there, we'd get a little bit lost. What we could do is we could ink around the edges with some of our um, red ink. But if we actually take this, add some of our um, tape runner to the back. Don't forget, cracking deal on those on the website. I wonder who will be stocking up. Hmm, could be me. <laughs> can never get too many of those tape runners, can you? It's definitely a stalk of essential. But by adding that black slightly down and slightly towards the left as a drop shadow, look how much that pops now into there. Completely transforms it. It uh, makes it really, really be lifted off that background. What we've done is we've also gone ahead and we've stamped the special. So of course you are getting both the special and the friend. I mean, you could be using the friend on its own. You could maybe even be using the special on its own. It's completely up to you. Um, but by mixing and mashing them together, you get that lovely um, sort of customizable sentiment. Why is my tape runner not working? There we go, just need to get it going. Um, so we've stamped this same black ink pad, stamping onto our multi-purpose card, which is absolutely ideal for doing all your stamping. And then we're just matting and layering that onto a quarter of an inch larger piece of our matte black cardstock. And that's going to build our sentiment. So we're going to add this down onto that bottom corner. I'm thinking we've got a little bit more space there. It's so going to overlap that curly bit, the tendril, if we're being fancy, of the F onto there. Like So it just makes it makes the design flow, it brings everything together by having that overlap of the sentiment onto that panel. It sort of draws the eye into the centre and makes everything flow. Again, that word flow, I know I, I do overuse it, but it makes that design flow uh, really quite nicely. So again, for a little bit of lift, I'm using some of my uh, foam pads. You will find your Crafters Companion foam pads on the website. I must say, I did place an order of these the other day. I do like my foam pads. <laughs> I do get through these like a dose of salts, quite frankly, and um, use them lots. They're great for adding that little bit of dimension, that little bit of lift, and the um, this size is perfect for your larger pieces. We do do a variety of sizes, three different sizes of your foam pads. Again, it's different. It's like the adhesives. It's different, um, different adhesives for different uses. And then we've got our special. I think we're going to tuck that sort of behind there. So again. Like I was saying, horses for courses, different size foam pads. So we're going for slightly smaller foam pads onto um, this piece here. We're getting a lot of hate or love for this um, foam and a roll song. Uh, people threatening to sing it, people singing it at home. I think uh, I'll have to sing it after, after this show, but uh, that will uh, mean that it's in my head for at least another week, but uh, you know, or then it'll probably be replaced by another equally catchy song. But we've got that onto there like so, using our foam pads for a little bit of lift. And now all that's left to do is actually construct our box. Now in terms of construction, your tape penners, are, tape penners? Your tape pens <laughs> are absolutely fabulous with them being such a strong adhesive, which is quite unheard of really for a tape runner. What we tend to think of tape runners being a for great for your quick matting and layering, great for perhaps wrapping presents, but you wouldn't traditionally think of tape runners being particularly strong, which is what makes ours so fabulous and unique in that they are really, really strong. So you can use them for any of your um, construction projects. But I do tend to use red liner tape. I do find it best. So all we're gonna do is gonna add some red liner tape onto each of the four tabs. And we can actually cut these tabs down a little bit. Um, we don't need them quite as large. So we could just literally snip in. You don't have to do this. Um, it just saves, quite frankly, otherwise I'd have to add another piece of adhesive onto that section. So it just saves us adding a little bit more red liner tape. So all we're gonna do is gonna cut down. So we've just re reduced the size of our tabs ever so slightly. And then I always find it easier to fold one side of the box at a time. So remove one piece of red liner tape rather than removing the backing from all four pieces and perhaps struggling um, and areas starting to stick where you don't want them to. Removing one at a time does just make it that little bit easier, that little bit more manageable. So going round, removing one piece at a time and red liner tape is terribly static. In case you've never used red liner tape before, I will warn you, it is very, very static. Very, very strong, um, but very, very static and it gets everywhere. And again, I'm just using my nails to get the backing off. You can, of course, use um, 
your tweezers or your pokey tools um, if you find it a little bit easier to remove that backing. But another tip as well, so that's our lid all, um, all uh, stuck together like so, all constructed. We're going to do exactly the same on our box base. So we're going to take some of our red liner tape and we're using our 12 mil with it being uh, a thicker um, sort of wider piece here with these being larger tabs that we are sticking now. So again, we're adding one into all four corners. And in order to make sure that that backing comes off uh, a bit easier, always make sure that you burnish your red liner tape down. Otherwise, what you may find is when you come to remove that backing, you actually end up removing the red liner tape underneath as well. So making sure that you use perhaps the back of a pair of scissors or your nail uh, or any tool like that, just to burnish that red liner tape down to make sure that it's nicely stuck and you can remove that back in nice and easily. Of course, like we say, you can be using your uh, tweezers, find them on the website on a fabulous deal, or your pokey tool if you find that easier. Again, it's just practice. I must say, I obviously peel quite a few uh, red liner tape backings off, so I do have a little bit of experience of doing it. But can you see on this particular one, I've not burnished it down properly. So when I go to actually remove it, I'm removing all of the tape, not just the backing. So I'm just gonna um, reverse that, push it back down, burnish it, and now it removes a lot easier. And that is, when you, it's one of those, again, it's those little tips that make your life so much easier. Uh, once you know it's like, oh, a little bit of a light bulb moment, it makes your life an awful lot easier. So then we're going round to our final one, and we're just gonna stick that together like so, and that is our box base. So reinforcing those score lines a little bit more. And then if we bring back in our box lid that we all decorated. So we used that technique uh, for the box side. So we used four different embossing folders from four different sets, showing that you can mix and match all of the collection together to get fabulous results. Embossing onto white card, inking using water reactive inks, and then adding our gilding wax over the top. Same technique for all four box sides, but just with a different design. And then what we did is we took our um, embossing folder, that gorgeous poppy design, we embossed it onto Nina cardstock and we coloured it in using some of our pens, our alcohol-based pens from our fabulous Spectrum Noir Academy of Colour to make that image really pop. Then we brought in some of our fancy sentiment stamp and dies, just stamping that and layering that onto there for a little bit of dimension as that finishing touch. And then the only thing left to do really is to fit together. This is always the moment of truth. Oh, it fits together. And that's why we put the L on the top, on the lid uh, to start with. It just means that you're gonna get it right every single time. I know it seems daft, but when you make the mistake enough times, you do learn. So. Our box and our lid fits together absolutely perfectly. Of course, I will be posting all of the measurements, all of the pen colours on um, my Facebook page later today. But just as a final finishing touch, yes, I did almost forget. And then I did just think, oh, there's a gap in that top right hand corner. We're going to bring in some little enamel drops. And these are actually uh, from Violet Studios. You could be using any pearls, any gems um, that you've got. But I have to say, I am quite into my little enamel drops at the moment and this will be perfect to actually um, use with your pokey tool or your tweezers because these are quite fiddly getting these off of your um, little acetate backing but this is the perfect finishing touch. Three of these we do like to work in our odd numbers of course to that top right hand corner just allows it draws the eye into the centre. You've got that balance of design rather than having that whole expanse um, that white area with no sort of really interest in there. Just three little enamel drops ties the whole that design together. So that is our finished craft along. I know we did speed up a few little bits of it. There was a few bits sort of here's that one I'd done earlier that I brought in, but I'm hoping that I've shared with you enough of the techniques that allows you to actually take this project uh, and actually create this yourselves at home. And of course, like I keep saying, if you do create this, recreate it in your own style. I'd love to see what you create. So make sure you do send in those pictures. But I really hope that I've sort of inspired you to um, get those embossing folders out. If you've got embossing folders at home that you've neglected, perhaps like me, Naughty Lily. Get them out, get playing, get all your different mediums out. Mixed media doesn't have to be super, super messy. It doesn't have to be uh, up to your eyeballs in ink or whatever. Get out all your different mediums, get out your inks, get out all your pens, get out your gilding waxes and just have a real play. For me, that's what embossing folders absolutely are all about. They're just having a play, bringing in lots of different techniques 
whether it be something a little bit more pre precise like your alcohol pen colouring, whether you're going to get a slightly more mixed media bringing in your inks and gilding waxes. Must say I had lots and lots of fun putting this craft along together so I'm hoping you guys have enjoyed the show as much as I have. It's absolutely flown by. Make sure you tune back in at 6 o'clock UK time. It's going to be an incredible Black Friday three hour extravaganza with Ben and Sarah. But for now, thank you so much for your company. Take care and I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>